You know, Hollywood hasn't really had success with movies about Mars. Uh, John Carter, Mars recently. Uh, Mission to Mars. Red Planet. Mars Needs Women. Santa Claus vs. the Martians. So there's there, a big difference in sci-fi films. You have the fantasy sci-fi fil films, say that fast, like Star Wars, uh, Independence Day, you know, fantasy element to it. Then you have the ones that's based in science, and those are the ones I really like. You know, Blade Runner, you know, some of the futuristic kind of things uh, where, you know, it's plausible. But when you really deal with movies that have science in them, like The Martian, uh, it really gives such credibility and excitement because it sparks that wonder. And The Martian does that. Absolutely does that. And uh, what was the guy's name that wrote this? Uh, Andy Weir. What a fascinating story. He wrote the novel and he, you know, put up parts of it on his blog. People went nuts for it. Started saying, hey, can you put it in a downloadable format? He put it on Amazon for free. Then he started charging 99 cents. Now I just checked it. It's like nine bucks. And everyone I've run into that's going to see the movie or at the screening or anything about The Martian, they either have read the book and loved it or they're saying they're in the middle of reading it. So I haven't read it yet, but I'm going to do it because if everyone's going crazy over this book, I want to see what all the, the buzz is about because, you know, it's rare that a book and a movie are, you know, similar that's really well with each other, but I think this is the case. So anyway, getting back to The Martian, it's pure science, 90% of it's science, and you have to get permission from NASA uh, if you want to use their likeness or anything to do with the agency. You have to get their permission, and they will only deal with movies that are based, in fact. And I think they said that over 50% of the script had NASA in it, so they had to get their permission. And what a cast we have here. We have Matt Damon, who's, uh, well, let me set up the movie. Matt Damon is, is stranded on Mars. <laughs> There's a, a manned mission to Mars. Uh, Jessica Chastain and, and, and her crew, and, and they end up uh, being in this big storm, and uh, they have to abort. And uh, Matt Damon's suit got damaged, so his life readings said he was dead. So they had to take off to save the rest of them. Of course, he's alive. And people are comparing this to Interstellar, which Matt Damon was on just last year. It's Interstellar meets Castaway, which is a good analogy, but I still think it's more like Robinson Crusoe. And they had Robinson Crusoe on Mars. I own it. It's back there somewhere. I own it. But I think because he doesn't have Man Friday, but because Matt Damon's character can give video diaries and update because he can't communicate with the Earth because of the damage of the storm. And so he has to just keep talking to himself in terms of making a diary. And he's also a botanist, and he's going to science the shit out of this planet. Yeah, that's, that was the original tagline, I think. So he's growing potatoes. He's uh, manufacturing water. He's doing all these things that are just... It's like watching Mr. Wizard on steroids. And, and Matt Damon's wonderful in it. He really is. He shines. Because you know how hard it is to act by yourself to pretend you know, you're alone and to make it interesting? Just ask Tom Hanks and Castaway. I'm sure it's the same way. Uh, but really, Scott... Our director, uh, after falling on his face last year with Exodus, like we needed another Moses movie, man, that was bad. Uh, but he's just one of the greatest directors of all time. I, he's allowed to fail once in a while. Uh, he was going to do the Prometheus sequel, but he decided to do The Martian. Now he's back on Prometheus. And uh, I love Prometheus. And Alien and Blade Runner and just goes on and on. American Gangster. I mean, he's just one of the greatest directors of all time. Absolutely. There, I said it. I'm not taking it back. So what's really cool about The Martian is... I think they shot it in Jordan, but it looks like the Mars landscape. I mean, you're looking at this movie and you're trying to see where all the tricks are and you're trying to see to yourself, okay, where's the Hollywood magic? You know, is that a soundstage? Is that a Capricorn One going on over there? And you're trying to figure this out and it just, you are totally lost in the story. You are just buying every second of this that he's on Mars and he wants to get home. Now, the drama just doesn't happen on Mars. You have the crew who's heading back home now who don't know he's stranded back there because NASA won't tell him. And NASA's led by Jeff Daniels. And... It's a really interesting play, politics versus morals, that goes on in this movie. Because Jeff Daniels, you know, he'll do everything he can to save Matt Damon. And he knows that he's there. They find out because they see the, the satellite pictures that things are moving, things are being repaired. And eventually they establish communications. I'm not going to give everything away, all the spoilers. Uh, but then Jeff Daniels has to be practical because NASA has to answer to Congress, has to have a budget, has money, the American people. You know, we're not sending the crew back. We don't need 10 dead astronauts versus one. So Jeff Daniels has this incredible burden burden on him. He wants to do the right thing, but he also lives in the real world. You know, it's, it's like that Spock saying, the need of the many outweigh the one... Uh, oh gosh, Star Trek 2, here we go. The needs of the many outweigh the needs... Oh my god, Jeff. The needs of the many... The needs of the many outweigh the one or the few. Oh my god, I can't remember, I forgot that quote. Uh, Spock, hold on, I'm thinking, uh, Spock... Uh, uh, don't grieve for me, Commander. Uh, ship out of danger. Uh, 
that way though. Oh, whatever. I'll figure it out later. God, I lost my train of thought doing that. Jeff Daniels has a tremendous responsibility, and it's really great drama that goes back on Earth, too. So, And, you know, this movie just builds and builds and builds, and you just love how practical it is. You love the science in it. It's truly one of the greatest films of the year, and it's one of the great sci-fi films of all time. Coming from Ridley Scott, who else would it be from? So go see The Martian. We come in peace. All right, for more reviews and interviews, just surf on over to my website at VegasFilmCritic.com. Make sure you pick up my podcast at iTunes. And if you like what you see, please... Thumbs up, comment, subscribe, that little V there, you click on it, you'll get all my videos and everything going on. Head over to my social media too. Get it on Twitter, get it on Facebook. I'd love to hear from you. I'm Jeffrey K. Howard. I'll see you next time.